I've seen it go from 28,000 bushels down to 500 in my lifetime. And when we hit 500 bushels, we decided that it was better to not to dip anymore. Local processing of alewives in the fish house ended in 1968. The abandoned packing shed was torn down seven years later. In 1992, the two towns of Nobleboro and Newcastle imposed a moratorium on the harvest of alewives. It lasted 11 years. Today, the alewives harvested in Damariscotta Mills are used primarily as bait by lobster fishermen. We spent quite a bit of time and quite a bit of money rebuilding our fishery, rebuilding our steel dippers is what they're called and they're like a big bin that is uh, electronically winched up and down and they lower into the water, the fish swim into them and then we, we uh, put a screen over the end of the dipper trapping the fish in and then they hoist it out. They're conveyed down a sluice for lobstermen to uh, put in their trays at the other end and put on their pickups and haul back to use for lobster bait. Frank Waltz and I determine every day whether we harvest fish or not. If there's enough fish to harvest, we harvest fish. If there's not enough fish to harvest, Frank and I turn the lobstermen away and tell them to come back tomorrow. In my lifetime, I've, I hope to see the fish come back to where they were when I was five or six years old. You can't really do very good lobster in the spring without fresh bait. So we just go either down east or further south, yeah, or one way or the other. But it's nice here. We live in Tennessee Harbor, so we could just come over here rather than driving like there's another place in Woolwich, Pittsburgh, down to Old Bath. Just that much further you gotta go. Yeah, it's very good run. It's finally come back pretty good the last few years. So. It's starting to look like there's going to be a harvest of them that's going to get better and better as the years go by. When I was a kid, I thought everything was an alewife. I thought all fish were alewives. They sent me over on the hurdles. So I was over there with a piece of salt pork and I catch this fish. And it's a fish with whiskers, long whiskers. So I ran back to my great uncle and I said, I've caught an old alewife. I was so excited. It was a horn pout. And everyone in town heard about it by sundown on that day. We make the brine by a layer of fish and a layer of salt. And then we stir it, a layer of fish, a layer of salt. And at the end, they weighed it down, we add a little water, and then it makes its own brine with the fish, the juice from the fish, the water and the salt. They stay in the brine a minimum of 24 hours. And the length of time they smoke almost depends on weather conditions. It's the color you're going for. The smoke isn't a preservative, the salt is preservative, but the smoke is just flavor and color. The silver ones are the other salted fish ready to smoke. And the gold ones are the smoked fish. If I ask to be tended, you have to check on it quite often, make sure it hasn't burned through. Is there anybody else around that does this? Oh, God, I hope you never stop. Alewives are an anadromous fish. That means that they, they spend most of their lifetime growing uh, in the ocean 
and they return to fresh water to spawn about a eight to ten inch fish sometimes they're a little bit bigger uh, they live in the ocean and when they first come back to the rivers they uh, are dark blue on their backs and they're it's silver on their sides but as they uh, live in the fresh water over the summertime uh, they will be cropping off some of the zooplankton and they actually change from a silver color to a beautiful bronze uh, they generally return along what they call the eight degree thermocline the eight degree thermocline in the ocean is eight degrees celsius about 47 degrees fahrenheit as it moves south they move south and as it comes north they move north in the springtime Generally, a warm day with a, a slight increase in temperature in the river water is something that will, will trigger a wave of fish to come into a river and, and start the, uh, the migration. I think the manifest destiny of the Elwive is as a forage base, as are the shad and the blueback herring. They complement the local fishes we call bait fishes. And, and help maintain a healthy population of uh, year-round food for the upper-end predators. Historically, Maine had alewife runs pretty much in every river and stream along the entire coast of, of, of Maine. Um, with the advent of European colonization um, and then the subsequent building of dams and later on water pollution, uh, these numbers declined drastically and in, in many cases the runs completely died off. In some river systems they are so few as the, the statewide they're not classified as threatened, uh, however the populations are drastically lower or much lower than they were historically. So we're in the business, the Department of Resources, Marine Resources is in the business of building up or rebuilding these fish runs um, as close to historical levels as possible. The fish ladder, or what locals call the fishway, enables the alewives to get around the falls and dam at Damariscotta Mills and reach their spawning grounds above in Damariscotta Lake. In all the old records, deeds, it's oftentimes called the New River. Other times it was called the Lock Stream, L-O-C-K-E. And other times it was called the Sacred Stream. And that was the most wonderful, ingenious development by the old timers without having bulldozers or mechanical equipment. Because it's a, really a 42-foot rise from the salt water up to the lake. And so they had to develop a a few feet where the alewives could go charging up through the rushing water and then they would rest in this pool then they'd charge up through another several feet then in another pool and all the way up through. The top of the ladder is not such a dramatic place as the bottom of the ladder. Uh, the bottom of the ladder you've got waterfalls and uh, they're fighting their way up and falling back and fighting their way up again. By the time they've gotten to the top of the ladder, there's one pool there and they're sitting in the pool waiting. But this is a very exciting thing for the people who come to watch. And they lie in their stomachs and they sit and they count as one goes over the ladder after another one. They look at the great bass that are sitting there so full they can't eat anymore, just waiting to, to get more room so they can have another alewife. They, they watch the birds and the eagles nest up in the trees up there. This is one of the favorite spots of people who come to see the alewives. And there's also a, a great deal of satisfaction on the people who are watching this process. They become fans and they clap and they cheer when the alewives go over and get into the lake. So Damascotta Mills is, in my opinion, a perfect way to, to view alewives. Here you've got this uh, stone and mortar fishway that was handmade 100 plus years ago that you can walk right alongside and in some cases cross over and look down and see hundreds if not thousands of alewives on their way to spawn. And what a valuable tool to introduce young people at such an early age into a natural resource such as alewives and just get them thinking at an early age about conservation and, and the environment that, that they live in.